we were, up to the end of the Second World War, a conservative Judeo-Christian nation. The turning point for all that was Dr. Alfred Kinsey, his book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, 1948. He was the father of the sexual revolution and therefore the father of everything that has come from that. And certainly one of the key things was pornography. Dr. Alfred Kinsey ushered the destruction of our nation's moral code with his books, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male and Sexual Behavior in the Human Female, known as the Kinsey Reports. The world recognized him as the leading scientific expert on human sexuality. The reports claim that humans were sexual from birth and that what we deemed as immoral sexual behavior was actually normal, thus making it moral. Once a biologist who studied gall wasp, Kinsey's obsession with sexuality led him to found the Kinsey Institute for Sex Research at Indiana State University. What people to this day are not aware of were the methods he used to collect his data. And I looked at the graphs that he provided, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 tables, and I said, wait a minute, that's a two-month-old baby. What, how does he know a two-month-old baby did or did not have an orgasm? And then table 34, a four-year-old child, uh, 26 orgasms in 24 hours? That's an around-the-clock experiment. Wow, that's torture. That's torture, you bet. He also actually employed bona fide pedophiles to, uh, to do what they did to children for his so-called data. Kinsey wanted to prove that we are sexual from birth, so it wasn't surprising that he drew his data from pedophiles, rapists, and murderers. They were the perfect sample because obviously a rapist pedophile will have a skewed perspective on sexuality, convincing himself that his victim finds pleasure in the act of being raped. Using a stopwatch and a ledger, they recorded their sexual experiments, systematically molesting thousands of young children under the guise of science. This research was compiled in his books, Sexual Behavior of the Human Male and Sexual Behavior in the Human Female. He said, we, I had 196 pre-adolescents under 12, and he broke them up into six categories, and fainting, convulsions, screaming, writhing, you know, striking what he called their partner, that's somebody who's raping them, okay? And they were trying to get away, but he said they enjoyed it. They definitely enjoyed it. The research in Kinsey's books were partly based on the collection of data and confessions of a Nazi pedophile during World War II, Dr. Fritz von Bajusek, who raped hundreds of children. After the war, the Nazi officer was charged and put on trial for the murder of a 10-year-old girl. They found detailed records of von Bajusek's heinous sexual acts with children, revealing his correspondence with Kinsey. Dr. Kinsey, who was fully aware of the Nazi officer's atrocities, warned him in his letters to be careful and encouraged him to continue his research. During the trial, the judge said, I got the impression that you got to the children in order to impress Kinsey and to deliver him material. To his surprise, Bajusek replied, Kinsey himself asked me for that. Now that wow. became the foundation for the sex educational structure that fed itself into what we are teaching our children right now as we sit here and speak. I venture to suggest that what we are putting into our books on sex education today is based almost fully upon philosophic guess. And of course, it was the foundation of all the changes in our laws, the sodomy laws, the abortion laws, everything else. I mean, he's there. His handprints are on everything that deals with sexuality. It didn't take long for Kinsey to deceive the world with his fraudulent data, convincing us that we were sexually repressed and ignorant to the truth. First, the media drank First the Kool-Aid. The and they were carefully taken care of by the Kinsey Institute to drink the Kool-Aid, okay. And then once they drank the Kool-Aid, yeah, the scientists, quote unquote, drank the Kool-Aid, and then the legislators drank the Kool-Aid, and then the lawmakers drank the Kool-Aid, and here we are. Essentially, what Kinsey did was he changed our belief about ourselves. This change of belief naturally changed our behavior. Soon, Kinsey's ideas permeated everything in our society, 
from our legal system reducing the penalty for sexual crimes and legalizing abortion, the media promoting his philosophy to the educational system, teaching children his views on sexuality. What's more, the pharmaceutical industry capitalized from the sexual revolution. We saw the emergence of STDs, sexual enhancers, and the morning after pill. The divorce rate soared along with sexual crime. As a people, we would never be the same again. Our innocence was lost forever. Ultimately, Kinsey's fraudulent data led to the legalization of pornography. One of the virgins in college that read Kinsey and believed him was a guy named Hugh Hefner. Okay, yeah, so he's in so college. So Hefner was yeah, an and advocate for he, Well, Kinsey's. he reads Kinsey and he says, hey, everybody's been lying to me. Uh, they've all been diddling around doing all this stuff and I have been standing here being a nice guy, forget it. He says, I will be, and I'm quoting him, Kinsey's pamphleteer. I will be Kinsey's pamphleteer. Really? So from there, he began to advocate for changes in the law and he created a magazine called? Playboy. Playboy, which then he said would reflect what Kinsey had found about human sexuality. In his fraudulent data. In his fraudulent data. data. America was educated by a pedophile whose work was labeled as science. One night you all were at the club and he offered you a quaalude mm -hmm. and you said you don't take drugs and he said back in his day they called he call, they called them thigh openers. Yeah. Thigh openers. Um, does did Hef take quaaludes? Oh, uh, I don't know if he actually took them, but I saw him offer them to girls almost every night we went out for a couple of years yeah. early on. Wow. When I was 13, man, start talking about weird things. No, really, stand on the corner. You know anything about Spanish fly? What? <laughs> Spanish fly? It always happens when you're 13. Only when you're 13 on up to like when you get married. Guys stand around and talk about Spanish fly and it never starts with one of the guys on the corner. It's always some strange 13 year old who says, you know what, you know anything about Spanish fly? No, tell me about it. Well, there's this girl, Crazy Mary. You put some in her drink, man, she <laughs> Yeah, Spanish, oh yeah, that's really groovy, man. Spanish fly is groovy, yeah, boy. From then on, man, anytime you see a girl, what's your ass on Spanish fly, boy? Go to a party, see five girls standing alone. Boy, if I had a whole jug of Spanish fly, I'd light that corner up over there. <laughs> so I thought it only existed in Philadelphia, you know, and I'm working on I Spy, and Bob and I are working together. Sheldon Leonard comes up, says, boys, I Spy is going to Spain. <laughs> a childhood dream come true. I said to Bob, you know, because he don't know nothing about it. I said, hey, Bob, you know what I'm going to pick up when I'm in Spain? He said, Spanish fly. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, man. How'd you know about it? He said, are you kidding? There's a girl in my neighborhood in Berkeley named Crazy Mary. We gave her some drugs. <laughs> and every time he told me a story, I had heard it. Every time I told him a story, he had heard it. We all knew the same story. So I figured there's got to be a guy about 2,000 years old that looks 13 going around the world. You guys know anything about Spanish Black? <laughs> So 
so bombing on, man. What did you sing? Wanna get some Spanish fly, Spanish fly, love it, love it. And we're riding on the plane, Spanish fly, Spanish fly. And we're getting to go through cussing. This is the land of Spanish fly, Spanish fly. We get in the cab, Ryan, the driver. Bob says, ask this guy if he knows where we can get some Spanish fly. I said, you don't ask the cab driver. No, ask the cab driver. He may know, man. Driver, stays in your arm. Listen, uh, you Spanish? <laughs> Say, senor, you American? Yes. You come from America? Yes. You could tell me maybe you brought with you some American fly? Sexual taboos on screen were broken, and uh, people how, how, think how, f uh, what can be the next step? And obviously, the next step is to kill someone for real. <laughs> but, because such films wouldn't be made if there were no market for it. I think that film only reflects what the world, what the society is about.